We're here today to show you that there's no need to go out and invest in new automation when your time clock works perfectly well and you're happy with it. Try a Neptune variable speed replacement motor next time. This motor will work in conjunction and we're gonna walk you through and show you that. First of all, this is our Neptune motor. It is robustly designed in a totally enclosed fan cool construction. It has a very simple to use user interface that comes equipped with a quick start guide. So it's easy to program, easy to understand. The motor comes in a square flange or a round construction and in different total horsepower ratings. One and a quarter, 165, 225, 2.7 and 3.45. The 165 is dual voltage. It actually senses the voltage coming in, so you don't have to change wires around or move switches. Again, very simple to use. Now today we'd like to show you how easy it is to connect and work with a time clock. Today with most variable speed replacement motors, you'd have to go out and buy some new automation system that could cost thousands of dollars. But you may like that time clock that's in your backyard. You may enjoy its simple uh, ease of use. And you don't have the thousand or more dollars to spend on a new automation system. So let me show you how this works. The first thing, the most important thing you need to do is disconnect the power. All right. Obviously it says low voltage, but it's, it's powering down at this point. So once your power is off, all right, grab a quarter inch nut driver and loosen up the corner bolts. All right, once you've done that, take your cover off. This will expose your power source and your user interface uh, discrete input board, your communication board, if you will, over here. All right, we've already got it hooked up for you today, but there are six different inputs right here on this six pin terminal board. The top input is a 12 volt supply that is powered from inside the motor. The bottom is a ground screw and the four in the middle are the various speeds that we've got programmed in for you already. So you've got the 3450 RPM. You've got the 2933 RPM. You've got the 1898 RPM and then 1380 RPM. So those are programmed in. So when you wire in and use those, that is what the motor will run at. Cannot be changed, cannot be manipulated by a homeowner. And that's probably one of the benefits of it is once you've locked it in, it is what it is. All right, so that's what we have on this side. As you can see, we brought the lead in here and we will tighten these screws and then therefore keep the cord snug. Now, you also have to think about the uh, time clock system that you've got. And we've got two of them here set up for you right now. I'll remove the covers. These are your standard intermatic time clocks. All right, underneath here is where a lot of the wiring is being done. Uh, again, the assumption here is that these time clocks have already been set up in the backyard. So there's no having to, uh, to reconnect them to devices such as a pool cleaner or a heater or whatever else you're using. Uh, so that's already been done for you. All we've got to do is then connect in to our motor. The first thing you have to look for on a time clock is to make sure you've got a fireman switch installed. Now there are those that, are, that come pre-set up with them in them. Uh, these are located right here. Uh, they're pretty much off the shelf items that you can buy at, at any pool store. They have two leads that come off the bottom of them and they're underneath here. As you can see, they're both coming out right here. One lead we're gonna use to connect into the 12 volt supply. So there's a red lead that comes off the motor it runs in here and we've got it connected in to this one. And then we have a daisy chained over into the lead off this one as well. So now they're both, they both have their uh, fireman switches powered with a 12 volt supply. Now with this one right here, we've got wired in with uh, the 1898 RPM. So that's the white lead. This white lead goes on the other lead that comes off the fireman switch. So we've got that wired in again, everything is, wire nut it up and snug and then we, of course we keep that over it so we keep the uh, the voltage supply out of the way of, of uh, hands while things are running on this side over here once again the other lead that's going to be wired into the black lead that's over there that's 3450 rpm so now they're both wired into speeds based upon the devices that they're connected to and the speeds they need to be running at when they come on so at this point now 
we will power up our motor, let it run through its prime speed, and once we've done that, we can show you how these both operate. Now, we've already primed the pump, and currently it is running at 2760 RPM. And that's where the program is set. The first thing you always want to do before you start working with any of these time clocks is make sure you've got your programming set up in here. You can program up to seven speeds. There's a time clock built in. You also have these override buttons that you can use as well. And there's a clean button, and that'll operate for 30 minutes at 3450 RPM. If you're, if, you, if you're having trouble understanding it, there's a quick start guide here that walks you through it very simply. Set the time of day, and then set your clock and your programs. Real simple to use. Now, it's running at 2760 RPM. You remember earlier, we set these two time clocks up. So what I'm gonna do now is simulate the first time clock kicking on by just tripping it to the on position. You hear now, it's going to 1898 RPM. It says, there it says it. And there he tells you it's a manual override. So now at this point, you cannot change that speed. No matter how many times I try to move it, you cannot make it go up and down. It is locked in, the homeowner cannot come in and mess with these speeds. They're locked in there for the duration of this time clock being on, All right? So let's say that we didn't want that one on, we'll turn it off. The motor will go back up to uh, the speed that it was on. We were on override at the moment. So we're at 2760 RPM again. Now we've got to run, turn this time clock on. Time clock two, this is a pool cleaner. It's set up for 3450 RPM. And you can hear it turning a little bit harder now. We have 3450 RPM, again, manual override. And again, no matter how many times I push a button, I cannot make that speed change. So therefore the homeowner cannot either. And that's peace of mind for the service person. So. Now we can also see if they're both on at the same time. Notice the speed didn't change. The higher speed always overrules, and I'll demonstrate that for you. Time clock one is on. We're going to go down to 1898 RPM. And if you look on the control, it says say, should say 1898 RPM. Now, if for some reason, time clock two comes on at the same time. The higher speed overrides the lower speed. And there we are at 34 bit. Once again, the advantage is to doing it this way, if you like your time clock, you keep your time clock. You like the ease and, the un and you understand how to use the time clock, you keep your time clock. You don't have thousands of dollars to spend on automation. You keep your time clock. All you've got to do is invest in a new motor. Uh, this gives you uh, some more options out there today to run with.